users. How do we authenticate humans? And some of the issues of, well, what is a good password? If we need to remember one, what's secure but also convenient? We're going to move on to how to store passwords and how to submit passwords. And we gave some statistics last lecture about typical passwords that people choose. We'll come back to that. So we're going to mix, uh, jump through some slides here and come back to them where needed. Let's look at what this concept of password entropy, and that's a, a measure for how uh, how much information is in a password. Let's assume, for for starters, that we choose random passwords, okay, from some character set. If we use just English lowercase, so just the English letters, to keep it simple, and just lowercase letters. If you can choose a password which has to be six characters long, how many possible passwords? You can choose a password which is six letters long from the English character set, lowercase only, how many possible passwords? How many passwords are there that could be chosen? Six characters long. 20, 26 to the power of to 26 to the power of six. That is the number of characters. So that is, choose a, a sequence of letters, six characters long. The first character can be one of 26. A through to Z, the second character, 1 of 26, A through to Z, and uh, keep going, the sixth character could be 1 of 26. So the number of possible passwords is 26 to the power of 6. Okay, 26 times 26, 6 times. What we would like is to make it, for some types of attacks, uh, an attacker will try and guess your password. And the simplest way to try and guess is a brute force attack. Try all possible passwords. So to look at the security of different password schemes, we'd often like to be able to measure with the particular structure of a password, how secure is it? And one way to measure that is how much effort would it take to do a brute force attack? So. Let's just give a few examples and then we'll come back to the, the lecture notes. If we have, what do we say? The character set was the character set of our password to get started is A through to Z. That is, there are 26 letters. If the password length is six characters. Then the number of passwords, the number of possible passwords, this is simple concepts that you've seen in other uh, parts of security as well, is 26 to the power of six, whatever that is. Uh, 10 million or 100 million, uh, you could calculate. So, a brute force attack from an attacker. Let's say you have chosen a password using this password scheme. You chose a six character password from lowercase letters. You chose it randomly. So, a brute force attack would involve a pa an attacker trying to guess your password. And a brute force would be to try all possible passwords. So, an attacker would need to try. 26 to the power of 6 passwords. How many is that? Let's just uh, calculate. I need a calculator. Twenty-six to the power of six, just so we're no, is what three hundred million about? Three hundred 
Okay, that's about 308 million. Approximately 3 by 10 to the 8, 10 to the 8 passwords. Okay. So assuming a user chooses random passwords, they don't choose words from dictionaries, there's no structure amongst the passwords. If I chose a random password, six characters long, then an attacker, to guess my password, worst case, has to try about 300 million attempts. Okay, so we want to look at how much effort would it take an attacker to guess my password. Take about 300 million attempts. How many attempts should we make it such that an attacker would not be able to do a brute force attack? How long, or how many passwords do we need such that a brute force attack would take too long? Anyone want to guess or estimate? Go back to your knowledge about, uh, remember we introduced DES and, and, and symmetric key encryption, we spoke about brute force attacks on keys. We said if a, we had a, say, a 32-bit key, we had some table that said a 32-bit key would take seconds it, to, to find in a brute force attack. A 56-bit key, I can't remember the numbers, but a 56-bit key with enough computers we could make that 2 to the power of 56 attempts. A uh, 100-bit or 128-bit key, 2 to the power of 128 attempts was too many for any computer to try in reasonable time. Similar concept. We want to have enough passwords such that if an attacker tries them all, they will not be able to complete trying them all within centuries and take them too long. Well, it depends upon how fast is, your, is the attacker in trying passwords. Let's say an attacker has a computer and a system set up so that they can try passwords at some rate. Let's just make up a number. Uh, the attack rate, that is the number of attempts per second, let's say 10 to the power of 12 passwords per second. The attacker has a computer and what that, their computer does is tries passwords to, to log into your computer system trying random passwords at a rate of 10 to the power of 12 passwords per second. Why did I come up with 10 to the power of 12? Later when we talk about how passwords are stored, we'll see that's well, about 10 or 100 times faster than typical uh, computers that do on, on breaking passwords today. So it's a, about in the order in which passwords are broken today. But we'll return to that number later. So how long does it take for an attacker to try all of these passwords? We have 3 by 10 to the power of 8 passwords to try. We do 10 to the power of 12 passwords per second. How many seconds? One or more? Less than one, okay? So if I can find your password in less than one second, I'm happy. So if I can guess passwords at this rate, and you have chosen a password randomly from this character set, A through to Z, and your password I know is six characters long, then I'm going to be able to try 26 to the power of six passwords in less than a second. So a brute force attack against such a password selection scheme is possible. Yeah? But nowadays it always times you out after a while or it's your Okay. I haven't mentioned and I've I've hide, I've hidden some details. What does an attack involve? Well, let's say I'm trying to guess your password for uh, your webmail login. Then how do I do an attack? I submit a request and the server checks and sends back an error, so I try another one. 
With such a system, I cannot do 10 to the power of 12 passwords per second because there's some delay across the network, the server is not fast enough to process, and the server would have mechanisms to slow, slow me down and eventually log me out. But in theory, let's say that somehow I can make guesses. We'll come back later and we'll see some ways in which it's practical that we can make guesses on, on passwords. Let's just look at the numbers of how many password possible passwords are needed to make a brute force attack at this rate not feasible. And then we'll come back how we can achieve that from an attacker's perspective. So what do I do in my password scheme? How do I make the brute force attack not possible? What am I going to do? What do you suggest? Sorry? Longer password. How long? So increasing the password length, you'll see if it's 10, it's 26 to the power of 10. I will not write down the numbers, but if it was 10 characters, 26 to the power of 10 passwords are possible, which is about, what, 10 to the power of 14, approximately. Okay, so this approach of increasing the number of the length of the password brings us up to 10 to the power of 14. If I was guessing at 10 to the power of 12 per second, it would take about 100 seconds. Still, I'm happy if I can guess your password in a couple of minutes. So, yes, we can increase the password length. Uh, sorry. 26 to the power of, let's say, you must have a 15 character password. 10 to the power of 21 possible passwords divided by 10 to the power of 12 passwords per second is about 1 billion seconds. Divided by our 10 to the power of 12, that's how many seconds, that's how many minutes hours, days, 53 years. Okay, that should be enough. That is, if you chose a 15 character password, 15 characters long, then a brute force attack would take about 50 years to find the password. Okay, 53 years. So that's strong, okay. If someone guesses my password when I'm dead, I, I don't mind. Okay. So, one way to make our passwords stronger is, we know, is to increase the length. And the other way, increase the number of characters we choose from. I limited the passwords to A through to Z, lowercase, 26 values. What if we allow uppercase and lowercase? With if the password could be uppercase or lowercase, it would be 52 possible characters. And we could do the calculations, but if, say, we had six characters, it would be 52 to the power of six. What is 52 to the power of six? So let's say I now allow uppercase and lowercase, six characters long, still not enough but try eight characters, nine characters, and so on, until you get enough possible passwords such that a brute force is not, not feasible. So, so far, to make a brute force attack not feasible, make the character set that the user can choose from large, increase the number of characters, make the password length large. What's the problem with the password length? If I require 15 characters, Remember, 15 character password. If I require you for Moodle to re enter a 15 character password random, what's the problem? Are you going to be happy? Are you going to easy be able to log in? Why not? It's hard to remember. Who, who remembers 15 character random strings? Not many people. It's hard to type in. You make a mistake, you hit the wrong key, and you have to try again. So. Too long is not very convenient. So, 
Let's say we cannot increase the password length, therefore make the characters set larger. Lowercase and uppercase allows 52 characters. But there are some other characters. We've got numbers. How many characters do we have available? We've got uppercase, lowercase, numbers, so there's 62. What else? All those punctuation characters. Anyone? How many in total? There's about 90 or 94 on your keyboard. If you consider just English, if you switch to Thai, then you have more. Okay? Or switch to a different language. But on a standard keyboard, there's, and it differs on some keyboards, there's about 94 printable characters. So 52 letters, 10 uh, numbers, so that's 62, and about 32 punctuation characters, full stop, exclamation mark, and so on. So let's say it must be a printable character with a normal keyboard, then our character set about 94 characters. So we have a limit usually. We cannot have an arbitrary size ca character set. So choose a password length such that 94 to the power of that number, if we did a brute force attack, it would take too long. So there's, there's one uh, approach for a password selection algorithm. Let's try. Let's say I set the length to 8. Then the number of passwords is 94 to the power of 8 in this case, which is approximately what? 94 to the power of 8? Six by 10 to the 15. Okay. About If I could break or t attack at a rate of 10 to the power of 12, then it would take me about 6,000 seconds now to break. Still possible. Okay, so make it nine characters. If the length was nine characters, how many passwords? Uh, let's slow down. Let's uh, so people can follow. Let's calculate again. If my attack rate is the same. If I, as an attacker, I have 6 by 10 to the 15 passwords to try, and I can try them at a speed of 10 to the power of 12 per second, then I have 6,000 seconds. Six thousand seconds is what? Less than two hours. Uh, let's say it's less than two hours, but let's just approximate. Let's say it's two hours. It's one and a half or one and, one and three quarter hours. So, now an attacker can find my password in less than two hours. So, what can you do? Make it harder. What are you going to do? Longer. We, 
assuming we cannot increase the character set, we're, we're limited to our, by our keyboard, we want to allow anyone to use their standard keyboard to enter in, let's make it nine characters. The length to be nine characters. That's a nine, not a four. The time is approximately approximately how many hours? Ninety four times longer. Okay? So, with eight characters long, it's 94 to the power of 8 divided by 10 to the power of 12. With nine characters, it's 94 to the power of 9, which is 94 to the power of 8 times 94. So that every character we add, we multiply by 94. So now it's up to 180 hours. Make it 10 characters and times by another 94 to, to increase the, the length. So adding one more character increases by a factor of about 100, 94 in, to be specific. So I think you, could, you eventually get to a, a length that was uh, suitable for your requirements if you know how long an attacker can take. Now, there's a more formal way that we measure the length of the the strength of character uh, passwords. We normally don't look at the time. So here I said, sorry, I've lost it. The attack rate was 10 to the power of 12. But it depends upon the computer. 10 to the power of 12, or is it 10 to the power of 10? It depends upon the computing devices and the system available to the attacker. A more general way is to look at how many bits are needed to represent the password. Let's go back to our first scheme. With when we had 26 to the power of 6, or about 300 million possible passwords, how many bits do we need to represent those passwords? Think if you need to store those passwords in binary. How long does the, is the password in binary? So we have 300 million possible values, 300 million possible passwords. How many bits do I need to store those, to store a value if I need to be able to store one of any 300 million? Or how would you calculate the number of bits? A character is four bits. A character is four bits. No, no, not necessarily. 64 bits, why? Let's say we're not using ASCII, even better. Yeah, we'll come back to that approach of storing as characters. Maybe think of it more of a theoretical approach. If we have 300 million possible values, think of, all right, so think 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 300 million, or 1 up to 300 million, then what length of a binary number do we need to store those values? Or, and how do we calculate that? Log base 2 of 300 million would tell you the number of bits to store those values. Let's do it from a simpler perspective. Just so everyone's clear. Let's say I had eight possible pa passwords. Very, very simple scheme where there's only eight possible passwords. How many bits do I need to store a password? There are eight possible values, so the number of bits needed is just three bits, because we could do it as... I will not write them all, but I think you know them.
if there were eight possible passwords, we need three bits at minimum. If there were ten possible passwords, how many bits needed? Four bits, correct? Or, where does four come from? How do you calculate four? What's the algorithm in general now? We use the log in base two. Okay, The log of base two of eight is three. Log of base two of ten is not four, but it's three point something. And assuming we cannot have fractions of bits, in computers, with our, our smallest unit is a bit, then we need to round it up. We'd need four bits. But in general, with n possible passwords, n possible values, you need log base 2 of n bits. Of course, in practice, we should round it up, the answer. Okay, because log base 2 of 10 is 3 point something. We should round it up to 4 bits. But in theory, let's just keep it simple. Log base 2 of the number of possible values. Coming back, I'll not go back to the, the picture, but we had a number of about 3 by 10 to the 8 possible passwords. How many bits are needed? Who has a calculator? Not so many. Calculator, a tablet, a phone, a computer. If we have 300 million possible passwords, how many bits do we need to store them? Log base 2. Twenty-eight point something. Is it twenty-eight point one six? So use your calculator and find the log base 2 of 300 million. Anyone confirm that? Anyone else get the same number? I don't know the answer. Twenty-eight point something. Good. Two people got the same answer. It's about twenty-eight point one. Twenty-eight point one six. Or if we want to be practical, we'd round it up to 29. Because we cannot have 0.16 bits. But in theory, we could count like that. So, what we do to measure the strength of passwords is we convert them, we think about them in binary. And we know from our analysis of DES and other block ciphers, we know the approximate length of a key in binary that is secure against brute force. We did some examples depending upon computer speeds. A 128-bit key is generally considered secure because you have 2 to the power of 128 possible uh, attempts. A 20, 28 or 29-bit key requires 2, by 2 to the power of 28.16 attempts. What's 2 to the power of 28.16? 300 million. Okay. There's nothing new about this math from high school. This is just the log of 300 million. Okay. So 2 to the power of 28.16 is our 300 million. The point is that when we talk about the strength of passwords, often we talk about them with respect to the bits. Let's continue on that concept. Let's say we 
one character long, our password. And we can choose from A through to Z. How many bits? To represent one character where that character can be lowercase a through to z, how many bits do we need? And I will let you use decimals, okay? We'll see that it's, it'll become useful. There are 26 possible values. So there is log base 2 of 26 bits needed. Calculator. Five point, let's give let's be precise. Four point seven. Four point seven zero something. Good. 4.70 will do. Okay, let's try another one. One character and a number. There are 10 values. How many bits? Remember, the number of possible values, log base 2 of the number of possible values. 3 point... I want to know that something. 3 point what? It will be useful in a moment. 3.32. That is, log base 2 of 10 is 3.32. Or... 2 to the power of 3.32 is 10. Okay. What about if I allow uppercase? Well, again, you have 52 values. So 2 to the power of uh, log base 2 of 52. That was with one character. Let's try another one. Let's say I have 10 characters. The length is 10. And we're allowed to choose from A to Z. Lowercase only. How many bits? Ten characters. Now, you may have the answer. Find the shortcut to get it. Ten characters, they can be A through to Z, lowercase only. How many bits? 47? If one letter, A through to Z, is represented in 4.7 bits, then ten letters each letter takes 4.7 bits, so 10 letters takes 47 bits. Okay, so a 10 character password where each character can be A through to Z, or each character needs 4.7 bits, then 10 characters, 47 bits. 4.70 times 10. One more. If, let's go backwards. If I want to allow passwords chosen from numbers only, zero through to nine, 
and I want the number of possible passwords to be the same as the previous case, around 47 bits. How many characters? How many characters should I use? How long should your password be such that we have about 47 bits in, in length? about 14 let's look one letter requires 4.7 bits 10 letters 47 bits so someone who chooses a 10 character password from letters if they choose randomly is equivalent to about a random 47 bit number someone who chooses numbers for their password and we want to have the same equivalent length in binary, 47 bits, well, one number uses 3.32 bits, so how many numbers to get 47 bits? 47 divided by 3.32, which is about 14, correct? We'll approximate sometimes. 14 numbers where each number is stored in 3.32 bits, 14 times 3.32 is about 47. So, now we can compare the strength of passwords. A 10 character password chosen only from lowercase is about the same strength as a 14 character password chosen just from numbers because they're both equivalent to about a 47 bit binary value. So we can start to compare different password schemes. This concept of thinking about the number of bits we need to represent all those values is a measure of how much information is in a particular password which we call entropy. So we can talk about the password entropy and often we use that to compare password schemes. This password scheme, forcing the user to choose 10 letters, has the same entropy of this second password scheme that forces the user to choose 14 numbers. And the entropy is 47. So the entropy is the number of bits needed to represent it. One more before we come to your password schemes. And Maybe we'll just return to the slides to see that. All right, you did the right calculations here. I've calculated before digits, numbers. One digit, 3.32 bits. English letters, 4.7 bits. Of the 94 printable characters, log base 2 of 94 is about 6.55. Then you can talk about, okay, if your password is chosen just from the numbers, just digits, how many digits do we need to get a password which is equivalent to 64 bits? One digit is 3.32 bits, so 20 digits is 20 times 3.32, which is what, about 60, 66 bits, right, close to our 64. Okay. So to get equivalent to 64-bit length uh, binary value, we need 20 digits, 20 numbers. English letters, one letter, 4.7 bits. 14 times 4.7 is about 64, so the equivalent strength. Printable characters on your keyboard, there's 94 of them. Each one we need 6.55 bits to store, so we need to get 64 bits, 10 printable characters. Another way to think of it is that if you choose a random password using the keyboard characters, those 94 characters, and you choose a password which is 10 characters long, your password is about the same strength as a 64-bit random number. Okay, That's the other way. So we can start to compare different uh, schemes. So if I chose a 64-bit random number for my password, 
you chose a 10 letter printable string randomly, someone else chose the 20 numbers, 0 through to 9 in a row, then they're all about the same strength. So we need some way to compare password strengths. Okay? You have a scheme? At the moment we're looking at it from a theoretical perspective of how to compare and always assuming random passwords. Okay? It's not so simple. But with the last 10 minutes, we'll come back to this and we'll see some examples next week. But for the last 10 minutes, let's look at your schemes. Give me your schemes. And I'll use a random number generator to select some good ones. We have group work. Quick. If you write your name on there, then you'll get a penalty for your quiz. No, no. I don't want your name. This is supposed to be secret. I don't want to know your password scheme because you may have chosen your bank password using this scheme. And now I'll break into your bank. Okay. I don't want your names on there. It's just some examples. Any more? Random, okay. Take a pick. Quick. Okay, let's read this one. So let's just look at some of them, and some of them that are the same will move on. So this person said, okay, characters, and I'll interpret what they write because it's not so clear. No, that one's just copied what I wrote on the screen. Another one. Okay. All right. I have to choose. Here we go. Use commas and other punctuation characters. So use the non letters, non numbers, so commas, exclamation mark, and so on. I can't read his writing. Write a simple, easy to remember word, substitute with letters to the right. Who said that one? Explain. Write a word, okay, a word. Uh, hello. You have a word and then you just look at the keyboard and then instead of the letter from the word, just okay. one letter to the right. Okay, so if the word on my keyboard is, I think of the word hello, I remember that, then on my keyboard, the the letter to the right of H is J. The letter to the right of E is R. And to the right of L is this uh, semicolon, and to the right of O is P. So I'd get R, uh, sorry, J, R, semicolon, semicolon, and then P. Okay, there's one scheme. I'm an attacker. I know this scheme. So when I do an attack, what I do is I find all the words in a dictionary. Hello is one of them. And when I try passwords, I try all the characters to the right on the keyboard. So I'll find yours in not so much time. Then I'll try left, right, up or down, and I'll... Uh, and it will be generally, not always, but generally faster than brute force. Okay? Brute force requires trying all combinations. But from an attacker, what they do is, instead of doing brute force, start with some words, and if they don't work, start some manipulations on those words. To the right, maybe replacing L's with the number 1, replacing the letter O with the number 0, and different manipulations. So that's what attackers do. So we just try some. This one looks very long. Here we go. If I have to choose the password, I'll have to, I will choose it from something that, that is around me. Something that I like and I'm familiar with. And I'll use digits and numbers. Okay. Using digits and numbers. Digits and numbers. What's the difference? <laughs> uh, fine. Um, but maybe let's give them, they say, digits and letters as well. 
but and the idea is to choose something that they can remember, so something they're familiar with. But what are you familiar with? You're familiar with words. You're familiar with people's names. You're familiar with names of other things like brand names and so on. But again, as an attacker, what I do as an attacker is that I build up a database of all the words, all people's names. There's not so many. And when I try and guess your password, that's what I try first. If there are a million words plus names plus places, just a list of a million, then all I need to do is try those one million values before I get your password. Maybe it's a variation, shift to the right, all right? Four million, because I need to try a shift each direction. And therefore, much easier than brute force attack. So even though these schemes may be okay, it's still very easy for the attacker. Let's try a few more. Password with a length between 6 to 10. Well, maybe after their analysis, let's say password with a length of 10. Password would not have any meaning. What's a word that has no meaning? Sorry? Not in the dictionary. Okay. Sometimes we may say a random set of characters. Okay, that it has no structure, because it doesn't have to be truly random, but close to random. That is, for example, a word with no meaning in English is probably a word, if you choose the letter Q, then the next letter, let's say, if the next letter is T, then it's very unlikely for that word to be a word that has meaning, because there are not many words in the English language that have the pairs of letters Q, T. So there are some combinations of letters that will definitely produce words which are not in a particular language. Okay, so choose something that doesn't have any meaning. Passwords with letters and numbers. Capital and lowercase. Uppercase and lowercase. Again, what's the problem with choosing something with no meaning? Ten characters long. So it's effectively like remembering a ten character random string. The idea of choosing a word with meaning is that it's easy to remember. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can find some other schemes of converting, like your keyboard one, but let's find others. Make up letters with no meaning, okay. Well, this is a long one. Let's see if we can cover it in the last few minutes. Rules. Include a special character, at dollar sign, exclamation mark. In, so the point here is that maybe you choose a word, something you remember, but you modify it by including some other characters. So make sure you include a special character that is a, a non-letter uh, or number. Include numbers, include normal characters. Split half for lowercase and uppercase. Okay, so a mix between case. So even if you choose a word like uh, hello, don't just do it all in the same case. So have a, a, a mix such that you can remember the word, you just need to now remember the, the case for each character. Make sure it's easy to remember. Your name, your lover's name, your birth date, Remove slash from your birth date, okay? But again, uh, now we have an attack. What if someone knows you and they're trying to guess your password? Then there's a, a much smaller set to choose from. If I know you and I'm going to try and break your password, I find the list of your friends from Facebook and use all their names. And from Facebook, I get all of their birth dates. So I use them in my attack. So we'll need to look later at different ways to prevent that. Almost one more. Uh, the previous one said use your birth date. This one says don't use your birth date. <laughs> use passwords using lowercase, uppercase and numbers. Fine, that's good. Don't reuse passwords across systems. I already said that last time. Passwords should be 15 characters. All right. uh, 
and I think we did a hands up last lecture and we saw that only one person had more than 12 characters if, if they remember, or one or two people. So not many people use 15 characters. So if you suggest this to me, I would most likely, if I must use this scheme, what would I do? I would write it down. That is, let's say SIT forces me to use a 15 character password for my login. I cannot remember it. So what do I do? I save it in a file or I write it on a post-it note and stick it on my monitor. And then everyone who walks into my office knows my password. So we need to make sure that we don't force people to use two secure passwords that are too inconvenient. 15 characters is nice for security but bad for convenience and therefore forces the person to make poor usage of how to store that password. One more. Anyone got a better one that I'm not going to find in here? Something rememberable. Okay, different mix of letters. What about longer passwords which are easy to remember? So use a good. Use a, a long phrase. I love SIT and CSS 322 is the best. And then take, and I can't remember now, but take the first letter for each word from that phrase and that becomes your password. Okay, so choose a phrase, a song name, a movie or some quote that you easily remember and those first letters of each word in that phrase are used to make up your password. So that way you can get a longer, if you have a long enough phrase, you can get a longer password, still easy to remember, and makes it difficult because the set of characters that you produce are most likely not in a dictionary. Okay. I think we're out of time. Think about better schemes. Some of them here are okay. Think about different schemes that you could come up with that now consider some of the analysis that we've done. Okay. What we'll do on Tuesday is just finish on entropy and look at how do we store passwords. And that will finish this topic and finish this course. Okay. So hopefully on Tuesday we'll finish this topic on storing passwords, if not finalise on Thursday. Let's continue then.